Hello, Raider friends. Nation. Welcome What's into the going Cowboys on? You're watching the Raiders report. This is the Cowboys report. This is the Raiders report, sir. No, this is the Cowboys report. You're watching right there. Raiders versus Cowboys debate. <laughs> Both channels, we're bringing them together here. Today's show is going to be a little bit of debate. We're going to debate who's the better quarterback. We're going to debate That's who's not really a better debate, though. quarterback slash wide receiver. It's also not, not really a debate. Absolutely debate. We're going to debate who's the okay. better head coach, better tight end core, better fans, all live on the Oakland Raiders report and live on the Cowboys report. So, Tom, let's get this one started off it. right off the bat. Who is the better quarterback now before we give our arguments because i mean come on it's a pretty simple reason you're just going to type c p. for Derek carr p j just because you like to look I, I like to see i know you can't read but it's p <sighs> so who's the better quarterback we're looking down here in the comments section on the oakland raiders report and uh whatever channel this guy runs who is the better quarterback type p for whoever that is and type c for Derek carr now tom i'm gonna tell you exactly why Derek carr is the better quarterback then Dak Prescott. Starting off with a lie. Good job, Mitch. Uh, hey, sometimes you got to lie to get by. All right, in 46 games, Derek Carr has more touchdown passes than Dak Prescott. 69. Realistically, we can That's just a nice number. Drop. We can just mic drop give right there. It 69 nice touchdowns. Number. More passing yards than Dak Prescott. And two less games. Also, in 2016, Derek Carr, Tom, mm -hmm. was an MVP candidate. Okay. Can you say that Dak Prescott has ever been an MVP candidate? No, you can't. 63.8% completion percentage, 3,937 yards, 28 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions for Derek Carr in 2016. We can all agree when Derek actually had some talent around him, because last year the dude didn't, he was an MVP candidate. 28 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. Oh, but wait, in 2015, 32 touchdowns, 3,987 yards. I can almost guarantee you Dak Prescott will never throw for over 30 touchdowns because, uh, come on, let's be real. Also, the reason why Derek's better, because Dak Prescott, the reason why I would never want Dak Prescott is because this guy can't get it done against winning teams. Great, the, great The point, last Mitch. two years, 225 yards per game, 1.1 touchdowns, 1.1 interceptions, and 5-9 and nine record against winning teams. Dak Prescott plays on a good team, but when it really comes push down to shove, nah, give me Derek Carr. Mitch, I, I thank you for bringing up that point. The past two years, yeah, Dak's been like, you know, average. Oftentimes, you lose most of your games against good teams. Do you know Derek Carr's record the past two years against uh, teams with a winning mark? So here's the thing. You look at the Raiders' schedule, and then you look at the Cowboys' schedule. I think the Cowboys we, have by far had an easier schedule. We, we're pretending that the Saints and the Bears and the Rams haven't been fantastic. The Eagles didn't just win a Super Bowl. Anyway, the correct answer there is 3-15. and 15. So I totally agree. You want a quarterback that plays his best against the best teams. That's Dak Prescott, not so much Derek Carr. Now, I'll give you a lot of credit. You did a great job of kind of tweaking your numbers and adjusting them and hiding the, the bad ones there. Here are the real numbers for Dak Prescott versus Derek Carr past three years. Let's put it here. Completion percentage, very much in favor of one Dak Prescott. The yards, well, very similar there if you want to include those touch, if you want to include the total yards, rushing yards, because in the end, Mitch, what's the difference between a rushing yard and a passing yard? And in the grand scheme of things, there is none. Total touchdowns, by the way, all of a sudden, 15 more touchdowns, fewer interceptions, and then yards per attempt as well, still in favor of, of Dak Prescott. And it's funny that the Dak haters want to bring up the dink and dunk narrative for Dak Prescott when that really was Derek Carr's game, as you've said multiple times on the Oakland Raiders report. So I like the picture that you put here of Derek Carr. I know, I did on purpose. Thank reaching you. Reaching for the pylon, it's all good. I yeah, mean, you can good. give me whatever stats you want about Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, all at the least, ones that favor him? at least though, he's got a running game. He's got Ezekiel Elliott. Heck, you give Derek Carr. I thought Carr, Marshawn Lynch was awesome. He is awesome. He's not, oh, okay. he's not Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, come okay. on, let's just be real. Ezekiel Elliott's one of the best running backs in the league. You give Derek Carr, the amount of talent, the offensive line that Dak right. has had. All right, that's on. fine. Well, I look. Is Tom Cable look, a good offensive Mitch, line coach? Oh, of course not. But we're biased, okay? I think that's fair. I think you're I just put biased. this up on the main channel, <laughs> on the main Chat Sports channel, because we're biased. That's fine. Who's the better NFL quarterback <laughs> right now? 73% said Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, are the people liars, Mitch? Because, I mean, apparently. Oh, wow. You're calling the Chat Sports channel a bunch of liars. Wow. I, I guess so. Because Take I think, note of that. How about channel? recency bias? 
what well, aren't we doing about who's better now? Like, isn't that the point? I think we're just looking cool. at 2018 stats. Uh, I'm looking at the past three years combined. I'll take Derek also, Carr. Also, I mean, okay, it's still very much in favor of uh, of one Dak Prescott. I right will now, take Derek Carr. That's fine. Now, I did also uh, ask the channel and say, hey, give me some comments there. Uh, Alucard number one says he hates the Cowboys, but he still picks Dak Prescott, <laughs> which I mean I think that's also very fair there. Now the the Doge memer says how is this even a debate? Derek Carr is terrible. That's a Browns fan saying that by the way. Ever since the injury, Derek Carr has, has not been a top uh, Adam Martin get a picture. quarterback there. And then Adam Martin also says is this even debatable? I agree, Adam. I'm surprised this is what Mitch led off with. This is 100% a debate. I don't see how it's not a debate. Dak Prescott I mean, look, will look, never, look. will never be an MVP candidate. Give me a franchise yeah. quarterback any day of the week, okay? So I went and I went back on ah, Twitter I because see. anything that you can find on Twitter, you know, Clever. it's true. Clever Derek fake Carr is a better again. quarterback than Dak Pres Prescott. This was two years ago. It's not. There's no Just time saying. stamp. It's also fake. I should have done the Absolutely exact thing. Not. This is actually Absolutely not. not. So, Tom, he also came out with this one. My first Ooh. child will be named Ooh, Mitchell, that one. boy or girl. First off, we both know I, I have no power in naming my firstborn son or, or girl. Oh. We, we both know Apparently I have it's no, going to be a boy. No. And then this one, you're telling me this wasn't a real tweet? Sorry, losers and haters, but my IQ is one of the highest, and you'll know it. Please don't feel stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. Two things. It's pretty not, it's two not true. Things. Pretty sure that's a Trump tweet taken verbatim. Absolutely Second, not. I love that you misspelled stupid, by the way, in the process I, here. No, I copied that and adds to it. it. I love it. That was good. I've copied and pasted. That was good. So uh, you're saying that you're, none of those tweets are yours? No, no, so no. So your no. IQ is not high because that's what that one tweet said. IQ is high. I just didn't tweet it. Mm, I don't know. People are talking. Okay. Who's the better quarterback, type P for Dak Prescott mm. or type C for Derek Carr? Raider Nation, I'm looking down in the comments. I better see a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of Cs. But, Tom, mm -hmm. how about we move this debate on? You said but. It's funny. No, I'm a butt guy. Who's the better quarterback, wide receiver combo? Okay. I want you to type one for Dak Prescott and Amari or type two for Derek Carr and AP. Uh, I want to thank you for not even trying to make this Amari Cooper versus Antonio Brown because I'm, I'm not dumb. I, I mean, your IQ is apparently Antonio not high. Brown's awesome. I, I'm, I'm not going to argue that he's not. So Antonio not Brown be is better here. than Amari Cooper. I think yes. Okay. But not. This should be fun. Not to the same extent that Dak Prescott is better than Derek Carr. Well, it's because he's not. If you're adding them all together, you get like an 8 out of 10 with Derek Carr and Antonio Brown, but you get a 9 out of 10 with Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper. And here's the thing with Amari Cooper. The numbers, I, I was very confused as to why Cooper was so bad the past couple games and the last time we saw him in Oakland and why Oakland fans were willing to give him up. And they did get a good return on a first round pick and it worked out well for both sides. But I've, des I've decided on this fact. The Raiders didn't know what the hell they were doing on offense last year. Or maybe Amari Cooper was lazy and didn't want to be in Oakland. Mm, I don't know about that one. I do because what I Amari he wasn't Cooper's even first targeted. Amari Cooper's first two years was very good, and then yes. all of a sudden, I for me personally, I watched the games. It was almost like he didn't want to be there. I think it was more that Amari Cooper was not the focal point of the offense anymore, and that Derek Carr did not look his way anywhere near frequently enough. Now, of course, Antonio Brown is great, but if Amari Cooper drops off by that much going from, or improves with that much, going from Derek Carr to Dak Prescott. What's going to happen when Antonio Brown goes from Big Ben to Derek Carr? And more importantly, I obviously Antonio Brown is a fantastic player. No one's going to argue that. Good. What happens if the Raiders don't win a bunch of games? What happens if they're sitting at like three and five, which I think, and you know how tough that schedule. It's very, very feasible there. I mean, they got a tough schedule. Which What happens if Antonio Brown for the first time in a long time isn't winning almost every game he's in? You, they didn't you, make the playoffs last year. And look what happened. <laughs> I'm just he didn't saying. show up in week 17. So I love Antonio Brown, the talent. I also don't necessarily love Antonio Brown, the drama queen, which is exactly what he is. Now, it's a worthwhile risk for the Oakland Raiders. But if I'm building out my franchise, give me Dak Prescott, give me Amari Cooper, who has far less drama. So and I feel like that entire outplay. time you just told me how great Amari or how great Antonio Brown was, and I, I totally player. agree. He is totally great. Derek Carr, not that great. Oh. Dak Prescott, great. Amari Cooper, You're great. telling me Dak Prescott is a great quarterback. Compared to Derek Carr, yeah. Oh, get out of here with down that. Check down Carr, yeah. Type 1 for Prescott. Raiders fans, big mad at me right And Amari, now. or type 2 for Carr and AB. I'm going to tell you why okay. that this isn't even close. Because, I'm gonna need like you said, you the Trump card, Trump card, it's Antonio Brown. Look at these numbers over the last four years, okay? Mm -hmm. 15 touchdowns last year, a career high. Heck, the dude has six straight years over 1,000 yards. Mm -hmm. Amari Cooper? Can't say the same. Now, what do I love about the Raiders, right? So 1,408 yards is a very, very important number because that's the most receiving yards in Raiders history with Tim Brown. 
Antonio Brown has done that four times. And I don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if he does it again this Are year. Are you picking him to, to do it? If I had to do a bold prediction, absolutely. Now that's kind of a cop-out answer, Mitch, and you know uh, it. 2017, though, 1,533 yards, okay? When I think about when Antonio Brown, solid route runner, Here's the thing. Amari Cooper wasn't the wide receiver one in his first two years. It was Michael Crabtree. Michael Crabtree was a very, very solid player. Now, the other reason why, Tom, and I did this especially for you because answer this question. Do you like dinosaurs? I love dinosaurs. I'm so that. glad that you love dinosaurs yeah. because they actually just discovered a new dinosaur, oh, Dropasaurus Rex. It's a brand new discovery. Dropasaurus Rex. And here's the first picture of it ever discovered. It's Amari Cooper. It's pretty Drop funny. Dropasaurus I'm, I'm Rex. I mean, we can all agree that this dude couldn't catch a cold no matter what. Also, clearly a T-Rex, by the way. I can tell by the arms. So. Uh, is that, that's the only indicator. Yes. Okay. Well, Dropasaurus Could Rex. Could have been an Allosaurus. So you, you blocked out the head. So here's the thing. Amari Cooper, when he was with the Oakland Raiders, again, could not catch the football. He was targeted 389 times, a catch percentage of 57.8. That was 35 drops. That during that time, that drop rate was 8.4. It was by far the highest in the NFL. So one of the reasons why Derek Carr wasn't targeting Amari Cooper is because when he would, he would drop the football. And his last year... Good thing was, they threw it to and um, his last uh, year, washed up Jordy then. Yeah, well, Jordy could at least catch the ball. You also had Seth Roberts. You were talking about another player who couldn't catch the ball. Okay. He had two wide receivers <laughs> with over a drop, <laughs> over 10% drop rate. I, I thought you were about to offer praise for Seth Roberts, oh, no. and I was real confused all of a sudden. I was real confused. Man, I'm not even <laughs> close to being that drunk. So here's some comments coming in from Benjamin Sandoval saying that Amari can't catch the football. Cooper would jog his route. Raiders I totally fans agree. are big mad at me right now, and I well, understand. Well, I mean, I think there's the other part. Like, the reason why he wasn't getting targeted is because he was jogging. He wasn't putting in the effort. He was dropping the football. Mm -hmm. Cooper was dropping Mitch Punch Tom in the oh, face from well, Manning. Okay. Here's the thing. Can I reach? No, uh, can't reach. Can't reach. Can't reach. Keep those comments flowing. If you guys want to get on, Mitch. if you want to get on the show, use hashtag Raiders. Use hashtag I don't even know. I'm which, glad, which I'm glad you picked run? Amari Cooper, by the way, because it got Raiders fans big mad there. Absolutely. So I think we can all agree, though. <laughs> Hold on. I like Jackson's comment, too. Ja <laughs> Raiders, Raiders going to be 0-17 when there's only 16 games. <laughs> the rare losing of the bye week only been done one time by the Cleveland Browns. Uh, J Jack App says you're smoking angel dust again, Mitch. Again? I don't see the word again in there yeah, I know. I included it. Wow. So apparently I smoke angel <laughs> dust. If you want some, slide in my DMs. Better quarterback wide receiver combo. Dak Prescott and Amari, or Derek Carr and AB. Type 1 for Dak. Now, type 2 for Carr and AB. I'm typing my 2 in the comments section. Raider Nation, I better see a lot of 2s. What do you think, Tom? I think you guys should subscribe to the Cowboys report right there, bottom of your screen. Of course, this is mostly for you Cowboys fans out there. I figure you Raiders fans don't want to do it, but I'm also welcome to you guys having fun in the comments section on our channel. YouTube.com slash Dallas Cowboys report. Of course, we're live on both these channels right now. Mitchell? Yeah, don't subscribe to that channel. Subscribe to YouTube.com slash Raiders Report, the number one Raiders channel on YouTube. Just click Literally subscribe not what you're below. supposed to do. Oh, watch me do it. <laughs> subscribe below. Turn on those notifications. Number one Raiders channel here on YouTube. Tom does a good job, though, too. Make sure Thank you guys you. subscribe to our main channel, YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV. You want to keep this debate rolling? Let's roll. All right, let's keep it rolling. Better wide receiver core, the Dallas Cowboys. This is a fun one, by the way. I like this or one. the Oakland Raiders. We want you to type D for Dallas or type O for Oakland. I'm typing my O for Oakland, Tom. Uh, this is a fun one. I'm typing D for Dallas. I think it particularly depends on how you want to structure your wide receiver board. As I've said, I am going to give you Antonio Brown over Amari Cooper. Good, because it's not The rest close. of the points I'm going to argue with. Whew, well. So, I'll let you start things off here with the Raiders. Very much revamped depth chart. Absolutely. So, I'm really excited here. So, Antonio Brown... But then you have Tyra Williams, 6'4", 225-pound receiver, who's going to be able to stretch the field. And then you also have Hunter Renfro, who I like there a lot in the slot. That is a uh, J.J. Nelson, not Jordy Nelson. Marcel Aitman also. What I really, really like about this Raiders team is their ability to – I don't think you're going to be able to bracket coverage – Antonio Brown said that really, really weird. And then Barack it? Yeah, because okay. then you have Tyrell weird, Williams. Now, Tyrell Williams, over the last four years, in 2016, no doubt, was his standout year. 1,059 yards, 69 catches, right? In 2017, 43 catches, 728 yards, four touchdowns. One of the reasons why his numbers went down a little bit is because of that Chargers offense. Now, one player, 
one receiver on the Raiders that doesn't get talked about enough. And sure, it might not show up in the stat sheet. No, no, wait a minute. You're going to go not, this route? I'm going to go 100% okay. this route. It's not going to show up in okay. the stat sheet. But you put J.J. Nelson on the field, who has the fifth fastest 40 time ever. It's just the ability to stretch the field. Okay. You're Look at that list. I, How many receivers on that list are good? But it's the ability to stretch the field. Marquise Goodwin's good. John Ross is just not getting used right in, in, with, uh, with the Bengals. he's just not that good. I don't, I don't even know who good. Jerome Mathis and Tyrone Calico are. The important aspect here is that you're not going to be able to stack the box. You're not going to be able to bracket cover Antonio Brown because J.J. Nelson is going to be able to stretch the field. Opening up things for Josh Jacobs, which I think when you look at your entire wide receiver core, that's what's most important. Being able to open up multiple, multiple aspects of okay. your offense. And that's what J.J. Nelson is going to bring to the table. Let's just go back to J.J. Nelson here. And I'll go out of order from what we had planned. Because I I'm very <laughs> surprised you're bringing up J.J. Nelson. Now, of course, this is the Cowboys depth chart here as well. We'll get to that. Amari Cooper, Gallup and Cobb and all that. But for J.J. Nelson, cool. You're fast. You yep. need to be more than just fast to have NFL success. The Cowboys have fast guys too. Tavon Austin is a sub 4 4 40 yard dash. Not guy. fast as JJ Nelson. Okay, but how? Um, it, what's in the end of it? It's between a 4.33 and a 4.27. Do you really want me to do the math? Yes, because I honestly don't know if you can. <laughs> 0.6. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> the Cowboys at least have the speed. And I do agree you do need deep threat speed, but Nelson hasn't been good. Now, a Mike, Michael Gallup entering his second year in the NFL showed a lot of great flashes last year for the Cowboys. I think he's going to break up or break out. Randall Cobb, who has been injured in the past couple years, but if he's healthy, well, all of a sudden, you've got a guy that in 2017, 2016, different ways they got there, but actually kind of put up similar numbers to Tyrell Williams. Okay. And then you have, I think for the Cowboys in particular, you have great depth. But you're telling me if, if Cobb's healthy, mm -hmm. if, there's so many ifs, and also... <laughs> Can't you play the if game for every receiver health -wise? Sure, absolutely. We're just assuming everyone's But if you're telling here. me right now, these are the numbers that this guy put up with Aaron Rodgers, and now you're giving him Dak Prescott? Come on, man. I'm also saying, I'm also taking away Devontae Adams and all the other receivers the Packers have had over the years and giving him a similar type of role relative to the number of passes man, that they're going to have. Man, give me Hunter throwing. Renfro. You even you said it yourself. A, yeah. You even said it yourself, an important habit of stepping up in important games. Yes, is the he exact does. quote for Hunter Renfro. Yes, you gave he does. it a B grade. I think when you tie in all those, it's – I don't even are, know if are it's you, that Are close. you saying you want Hunter Renfro over Randall Cobb right No, now? I'm saying I want okay. Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams, Hunter Renfro okay. over your big three. I will take my big three, and I'll take my depth of Tavon Oscar and do so many different things for you. And I'll oh. take underrated depth players in the, with the likes of maybe Alan Hearns actually makes the roster this year. Noah Brown. list oh. goes on and on there. Oh. So, I don't, so I don't have to ever rely on Marcel Eatman. I don't think it's very good at all. I, I didn't mention Marcel Eitman for a certain reason here, Tom. So Daryl Barger's coming in. Scrap, scrape, I can't read. <laughs> scrape your butt if your IQ for drops off by that much. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I, I don't. I, so, someone translate for me there. Jen, Jen's blah, big, blah, Jen is big mad at you. crap about my Cowboys. Jen, Jen is big mad at you right now. Slide in my DMs at Metroid 365. <laughs> <laughs> Fitz, Gallup, who? I agree. Who's uh, Gallup? Let's see. He went earlier than Hunter Renfro did, so. No, I actually like Michael Gallup Thank coming you. out of Colorado State. I'm not even going to act like I didn't like him. Also met him. Good kid. Good kid. Joseph, get a picture. Uh, <laughs> D-Cop, Gallup, Cobb. What's the debate? I, I think he meant Cooper. I'm not I'm not actually sure what, what the D-Cop part was there. But there you go. Uh, All right, so let us know. Better receiver, <laughs> Corpse, because uh, Mitch can't spell, right? Why can't I? Why do you always put Corp? Because it is Corp. No, it's not how you spell it. <laughs> you spell with an S. Uh, you like, say it like core. Okay. And then it's corpse is how you spell it. Well, spell yeah. check. Spell check. Producer type Brett's going to take an L there, too. Or type O for Oakland. Where I'm looking down here. I see a lot of Ds on my side. Well, that just sounds like you should clear in your history. That sounds like, I don't know it's what not, this is. not guy. that type He's of thing. married, guys. It's been a rough stretch, as you can tell. He's not got it. a lot of Ds on his screen. I got hella O's on mine. All right. Um, all right, type D for Dallas, type yeah. O for Oakland. You want to keep this debate rolling? Yeah, let's keep on going. Let's stick with the uh, the offensive mindset here. Let's go with tight ends. Which I'm, one I, of us have. No, I, I feel pretty good about mine. Yeah? I, I feel pretty good about mine. All right, MK. Uh, let's see. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> I actually want you to start. You want I, to I will start. be honest. Um, I may have cheated on this one and looked at your graphics. So you start here with Oakland. I, I am offended. Because you, you, you claimed you were going to rip Jason Witten. I want to see if you actually do it. 
Oh, I don't really think I need to rip Jason Witten. I don't even know if he'd be fast enough to even see what comes up on the screen. So let's look at the Raiders' defensive, defensive, tight end depth chart. Darren Waller, tight end one. I'm telling you right now, keep your eyes on Darren Waller. One of the reasons why I really like this kid is because he came into the league as a wide receiver. Uh -huh. Now he's a tight end. He's super athletic. Foster Moreau, who you liked a lot. He wore number 18 at LSU, which is a special, special thing. And let me tell you Carrier, where he was on my board. Not too excited about him, I'll be honest. Luke Wilson's Fourth got round two wells in his name. And then they signed Eric Swoop. The players that I'm really going to concentrate on, though, is Darren Waller, Foster Moreau. Here's the thing. We don't know exactly what we have. So, again, I'm going to talk about a lot of ifs. Fair. A lot, a lot of ifs, Tom. But if there is something that I do know, mm -hmm. it is that Jason Witten did not play football last year. He retired, Fats. and he's not very fast. Plus, I also know mm -hmm. that the Dallas Cowboys tight ends mm -hmm. are not exciting whatsoever. Why um, are they not exciting? Because I saw what they did last year. Okay. And it was not pretty whatsoever. Okay. Not pretty at all. And I think that you're going to look at what Derek Carr is going to be able to do with his tight ends. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better. So this is exactly why I'm not excited about the Cowboys tight ends. I saw Blake Jarwin bring in 27 catches, 307 yards, three touchdowns. Ugly. Jeff Swain? Jeff? Geoff? Who knows? It's, Dalton Schultz? It's Jeff. Rico Gathers? Mm -hmm. uh, Rico Hype Train will never die. You're welcome, everybody. I'm just saying, I've seen this. Okay. I've seen that on the field. And after... Watching Jason Witten, who I'm confident in, I could beat in a foot race. Hell, I bet. Think, no, you wouldn't. Hell, I think you bet. could beat in a foot no, race. No, I would not. Jason, if you're in Dallas, which I know you are, come race me here at Chat Sports. Fun fact: Turns out Witten's actually faster now than he came than when he retired. No way. He's cut some weight, so there you go. All right, so absolutely not. All right, so you're banking I, on you're I, banking on growth and upside, right? Yes, because I already saw the tight ends of the Cowboys. It is saggy and laugh my ass off bad. I have seen the Raiders' tight ends, and it's even worse. These were the numbers last year. Darren Waller didn't play in 2017, 75 yards on, on six catches. Derek Carrier, seven receptions for 67 yards. Luke Wilson, who might not even make the team, actually had the best numbers, and I did like Foster Morrell. I, I did like him at LSU. He's also a fourth-round pick. So was Dalton Schultz. So let, let's call those guys washes there. Blake Jarwin showed some promise. More promise than any of these guys showed is my point. So both these tight end situations in reality are actually not that good. Like you're banking on growth and upside or for the Cowboys, Jason Witten being close to what he used to be. But see, you just showed stats when Jared Cook was the clear cut number one tight end. Not all those guys were on, the, on Oakland last year. I understand that, but what mm -hmm. I'm saying is Jared Cook was the clear cut number one tight end. Mm -hmm. Those guys, I think, now have an opportunity mm -hmm. to at least be something. I mean, I think it's That's kind of... Same is true for the Cowboys. But I'm saying like last year, all four of those tight ends had a chance. Mm -hmm. Nothing really happened. And I think when you have four tight ends, you don't have any. I think this year it's a clear cut that Darren Waller, and I'll take Darren Waller Bet. over all four of those other tight ends for the Cowboys. Bet. By the end of the year, Darren Waller is not the starting tight end well, for the Raiders. Well, that might be more of It'll a, be his problem. More rough. Witten is a better Ooh, broadcaster I don't know about that one. than he is. I don't know about that one. He wasn't very that good. That one's from Hot Wheels, so you, this guy knows what it takes to get good. some speed going. Benjamin, hey, man, I, uh, I'm with you. Big Dog. Mitch would win and I'll a take, foot race. I will take Jason Witt. All right, how about this? Everybody who's watching right now on our Cowboys report and on our Raiders report, tweet at Jason Witten, put this, send it to Jason Witten. Jason, I will challenge you in a race. I am here in Dallas. Get at me. What was, what's your 40 time, by the way? Drinking or running? What do you think? Well, I can probably, I don't know, Tom. We've done some questionable things here on <laughs> Chat Sports. Obviously running based on what we're discussing. Um... Jason, race me, and then we'll find out. Yes, yeah, so because you, you know. know you can't run sub five. Oh, I absolutely can. No, you can't. Sub five? You you will not run sub five. Hundred percent. Bet. No, no, you won't. Yes, <laughs> sub five. No, you won't. I ran a four eight in college. Okay, I hope yeah. I'm not that slow now. As you drink your beer. <laughs> I got abs. Better tight end corps. <laughs> DC Good things abs Cowboys. impact running. <laughs> <laughs> or O R for the Oakland Raiders guys. Keep these comments flowing, and we're having a lot of fun. On today's show, did you even make your argument yet? I don't even know. Oh, it was just that you are banking on upside and growth, which is fair, but also so are the Cowboys, and the Cowboys produced more tight end spot last year. And that's even before you get to wit. Well, I'm a grower, not a shower. All right, better head coach. Insert the clap, if you want the clap, or insert the clown, Chucky Face, for John Gruden. Who is the better Head coach. I'm, I'm actually going to pay attention to what's going on in the Cowboys chat here because I'm very curious to see <laughs> what the responses are. And that will impact directly how much I push on this one. All right, I want to see if we even can find the clown emoji, guys. Come on. Can we get some clowns in here? Clown emoji? 
No. <laughs> There's one from Elden, aka Also, Turtle. Brett, you're being accused of being biased in the, in the Cowboys chat. <laughs> also, it's funny because Brett's a Cowboys fan, too. So who's the better head coach? <laughs> Finally seeing some clowns come up here from Sheets, Hot Wheels, David. Much appreciated. Uh... Are we I, ready to get into the debate? Yeah, I do see a couple of clown heads, by the way, on, on the Cowboys channel. I, I will say that. Okay, well, oh. So that will directly impact. I did impact. just see a clap. Okay. I got a few claps, too. And a middle okay. finger. Awesome. All right. So um, who's who's starting this one off? Me? You go first. That's, Looks that, like That's it. your graphic. Absolutely. So John Gruden is the better head coach. Better head coach. Why? 12 to 9 years of experience. More wins, 99, about to get 100, week one against the Broncos. <laughs> Playoffs, 5-4, and four, better than Jason Garrett's record. Super Bowls, John Gruden has the advantage, 1-0. to zero. And hated by the fans? John Gruden isn't hated by Raider Nation. Garrett has Gated, a... Garrett is hated by the Cowboys. I, I watch your show. I, I, I see the clown emojis in the chat, so there you go. <laughs> uh, I will say, though, that Garrett has a better win percentage. Sure. And Gruden won with a different team. Sure. But I can also say that Jason Garrett is not a... Do you really think Jason Garrett's a good coach? Um. <laughs> um. Can we put him on screen? Reasons why I don't trust Jason Garrett. I don't think Jason he's a Garrett. terrible coach. Reasons why I do not trust Jason Garrett, and I think everyone watching can agree on this. He's got red hair, Tom. I mean, you can't. It's the mark of the devil. You it's, can't a trust it's a fair point. It's a fair point. With red hair, the dude literally has the clap. Hence why we put the clap emoji on. He played for the New York Giants. Why I don't like that is because originally a Cowboy back goes to a trader. Oh, okay, I see. I see. I, I, okay, I see. I see. I see. <laughs> bad quarterback. I see. Touche. He was actually yeah. a really bad quarterback. And he went to high school in Ohio. You just simply can't trust anybody. Anybody. I feel personally that went to high disrespected school in Ohio. With, with that. Do because you? I, of course, went to high school in Ohio. Let's well, go back, though. Let's look at only the past five years. He was born in years. Pennsylvania, which let's, I was Let's born go to PA. only the past five years. Uh -oh. Record, Jason Garrett. Win percentage, Jason Garrett. Playoff firsts, Jason Garrett. Talking about playoffs, playoff wins, and Garrett hasn't been fired yet, like John Gruden has. I'm, I'm just saying, the past five coaching years, blind resume. You're picking the guy on the left, aren't you? When was John Gruden fired? By the Bucks. Five years ago? No, within the last five coaching years. Oh, I was gonna say. Obviously, within the last five I want, years, maybe I, I, I should have said five seasons. Okay. Sorry. I was Sorry. gonna say I can almost. I'm not good at math, but I know 2008 was not five years ago. <laughs> Alan wants to know who hates Garrett from Cowboy Nation. I saw a lot of uh, a lot of. Well, now I'm seeing a lot of random emojis. There's a cow emoji in there. From I'm not really sure why we put a cow emoji in, but uh, yeah, but there you go. Well, Chris a lot Jensen, of, lot of, lot of maybe Gruden because there. he gave us some more. <laughs> Ted Easton, get a picture. <laughs> Laugh my ass off. Soulless <laughs> ginger. Well, it's also true. Honestly, I think from your comment before, yeah. somehow you and MK are going to have a redhead. Oh, game. yeah. I already know that's going to happen. as a fact. Because <laughs> her dad's a redhead. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Craig, the disrespect for us to put a clown for Gruden, but Garrett for show a clown. Well, I thought it was like Chuck. You were I went, for Chucky I went head, with right? the Chucky Okay, heads. that's what I thought. Yeah. Craig, I mean, also, what the hell kind of picture you got going on here, my man? What is, antlers? I don't know what they are. Are they bunny ears? Mm -hmm. It looks like... I think what you were looking at before, D's on your screen. I think Craig does for a full-time job. That's what I'm looking at right now. Craig, all good. I love you. All right. How about this? We'll keep the debate going here. This one isn't a debate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Better father-son combo. Let's type Jones it. or type Davis. Uh, even now, it's funny because there are segments of both fan bases, I think, that don't like the ownership group. Um, I think for this one, there is just a clear-cut superior than everyone else. I agree. Now, I love Al Davis, actually, so I, I don't mean any disrespect towards late great Al, but let's also give Jerry Jones a lot of credit here, too. Of course, a Hall of Famer just like Al Davis is. He played a massive role in what the NFL actually is today. Without Jerry Jones, there is no NFL on Fox. And I'll give Jones a lot of credit here. Jerry, unlike so you Al... support Fox? Fox Sports, yes. Um, <laughs> but of course, they're nothing, compared, sports, they're nothing compared to chat sports, of course, but, you know. <laughs> now, for, for Jerry... I think he in particular learned from Al. Near the end, Al became obsessed with speed, and the drafts did not go very well. Jerry Jones has handed a lot of the control over to Will McClay and Stephen Jones. So let's just say Jerry and Al are awash. I actually think that's fairly fair. Stephen Jones wins by far. Number one, he is actively involved in the Cowboys organization. I think he does a pretty good job overall. He's an expert in contracts. Most importantly, Stephen didn't move the, move the franchise. And even more importantly, his hair isn't terrible. 
I believe that Mark Davis is automatically disqualified from this discussion based solely on his hair. I will 100% agree with you that his hair is terrible. Cowboys win. There you go. Because, and there's a reason why I'm not going to put Mark Davis on screen because <laughs> Already I, like, taken I, want, the L. Okay, I, I want people to I watch this it. show. Because uh, if we put uh, good old Mark Davis on screen, shit's going to hit the fan really, really quick. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Al Davis is the GOAT of owners. I mean, let's just be point blank and simple. So, he was an American football coach and executive. He was the principal owner and general manager of the Oakland Raiders of the National Football League for 39 years until his death in 2011. RIP. Let's see some RIPs in the comments section see a lot for of Al Davis. He also served as commissioner of the AFL in 1966. So, you want to talk about movement, and I think a lot of what Jerry has done is based off some of the great things that Al's done. But what I really love about Al is he totally shifted the way that we do things mm -hmm. now in the NFL. Davis was an active in civil rights, refused to allow the Raiders to play in any city where black and white players had to stay in separate hotels. He was the first NFL owner to hire an African-American head coach and a female chief executive. He was also the second NFL owner to hire a Latino head coach, Tom Flores, and he remains the only executive in NFL history to be an assistant coach, head coach, GM, commissioner, and owner. You want to talk about somebody that knows the NFL inside and out? It is Al Davis. Mm -hmm. So how dare you put that Jerry Jones is better than Al Davis. They are both great. They are both great. And Steven outweighs Mark by far. <laughs> Maybe in weight. Actually, no. Are you no. sure about that one? I, if I had to power rank these guys, it would, fat. it would be one for Al, the Joneses, and then Mark. Like, I mean, Pretty come on, far guys. Down. I mean, Mark is... Yeah. I'll take a sip. I think we win that one. Let's go to fans then here. <laughs> I, I feel like there's going to be... No swaying involved on either side on this one. So who have the better fans, Cowboys or Raiders? Mitch, you can make your pitch here for Oakland, and then I'll make my pitch. So here's the thing. There is only one nation. It is Raider Nation. And the Raiders are the best fans in sports. The loyalty through and through, without a doubt, the most notorious fan organization in sports. Think about this. The Raiders, man, they've gone through the immaculate re uh, reception, the tuck rule, two relocations. Heck, <laughs> They went through Jamarcus Russell and proving that once you bleed silver and black, heck, you never go back. Now, now, here's the thing. The fact that these guys, the fan organizations, they spread wide, okay? Heck, there's websites, there's all sorts of things for Raider Nation. And here's the thing, Tom. Mm -hmm. Prove me wrong. I was there with you. Prove me wrong. Exactly. Raider Nation love spreads deep. And the fact that I was able to meet a Phrasing. bunch of these people. No, it, it spreads deep. I'm all about phrasing here. I met all these people. Yeah. Have you ever met any of the Cowboy supporters? Do you have any Cowboys pictures? We took one while I was there with you, actually. So, so <laughs> you were live here at the Raiders event with me? Yes, I was. With only Raiders fans? No, there were some Cowboys fans mixed in there. I don't Remember, know. I left you for a good half hour to go hang out with them. Uh, I don't know. That, that yeah, entire day is a little bit of a blur. Yeah, but you, Raider you Nation, dig it a little. It goes a, a, a little far in between. It is like an absolute family, and it's family strong, and that's why the Raiders hey. are the number one fan base <laughs> in the NFL. This is fair. I, I will preface this by saying Raiders fans are awesome. Yep. And they beat 30 other franchises. Oh. They don't beat the Cowboys. And Raider Nation might spread far, and they definitely do. Are, are the Raiders America's team, Mitch? Oh, here we go. No, they're not. The Cowboys are America's team. They're the most loved, and they're also the most hated. That's why they're America's team, because that's just perfect exactly. for America. The most hated. Again, love the Raiders fan base. You guys are awesome. But give me my Cowboys fan base every single time. And I've got the numbers to prove it, Mitch. Do you know what that number is? Oh, here we go. I don't think you do know what it is. I don't. It's the Cowboys vs. Raiders Report subscribers. <laughs> if Raider Nation's so good, why do I have over 8,000 more than you? I, I, think, I don't have look, a good answer. Look, ma <laughs> math, math doesn't lie ever. That, that is a scientific fact. I math mean, cannot I be wrong. I'm not good with numbers, so I don't know the difference so here. So I, I think what, what this indicates to me is that the Cowboys Report channel are better. started before the Raiders ah, Report. I think the Cowboys Report channel is better overall and that's why there's oh. more and it's certainly grown at a higher rate because America's team knows what's up see how about this there might be more Cowboys fans in the world but I'll take this I'll take 50 Raiders fans any day over 100 Cowboys fans because like, of the passion like in a fight or what are you talking about there? a fight too hell okay. yeah I've been to Raiders I've, I've seen the black Bobby hole. says you're real drunk right now and I, I love it I've had half a beer I've also had half a beer and I've drank 84 in six minutes. Yeah. What up? Are these Las Vegas supporters or Oakland supporters from John Tibbetts? John, get Good a picture. Question. Get a picture. Ramiro says we're based in Dallas. Well, see, here's the six says Texas is huge. Simple math. 
Well, here's the thing. A, so is California. Also, B, we actually were in California first, and I actually lived in Berkeley. So, I don't want to tell you there. Texas is huge. Simple math. See, sick. I got it. Oscar says Al Davis there. Going back to that one. <laughs> it's, it's fine. All good, Oscar. All good. All right, Would you rather people. coach the Raiders, John Gruden now, or John G two decades ago? Uh, two decades ago? Because I know what I'm getting. I mean, I would actually that's, probably. That's because... <laughs> Manny, why do you want to hurt me? <laughs> <laughs> See, Eldon's got, got your comebacks for you there. Oh, I, you missed that one. What yeah. the Raiders are the world's team? I think mm -hmm. is that what it was. That is what it was there. All right, Kareem with a mouthful of a last name. I beat you and went in a. I'll bet. Sorry, half of it was blocked off. I'll bet. No, you were right the first time. That says beat. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'll beat you and went in a race. Kind of want to take away your beer. <laughs> you're, you're a little far. So who's the better fans here? If you really want to reach for it, better go. fans, Cowboys or the Raiders? We want yeah. you guys to comment below. Keep it flowing yeah. in the comment section. Yeah. All right, folks, I'm Tom Downey. Of course, that is Mitchell Renz. Go follow us here on our Twitters, at WhatGoingDowney, at MitchellRenz365. I'm very glad because I did not say it was at MitchellRenz365 for myself like I have before. So here's what's going on, all right? We're going to try something a little bit different this time since we are live on both Cowboys and Raiders. So if you're watching on the Cowboys channel, live Q&A coming up, so use hashtag Cowboys in the comment section. If you're watching on the Raiders channel, Mitch has something else for you coming up in just a second. All right, folks, welcome hey, into the fan. Cowboys Thank Report live Q&A. Again, use hashtag Cowboys in the comment section. First up is Random Lemon, who says, who's better, Gronk or Witten? Cough, Witten, cough. Um, I'm actually probably still going to go with Gronk, if we're being honest here, just because I think that Gronk could still bring it for, like, the six games he'd be able to play before he'd inevitably get hurt. But in terms of, like, those upcoming year, Gronk's not going to play. So I think there's at least a cohes uh, co – uh, that doesn't make any sense as a word there – a uh, sensible argument for Jason Witten there. So words fail me early here on the Cowboys board. So make sure you're using hashtag Cowboys in the comment section here, live on YouTube, live on Facebook. Next up from Talon Gaston. How about Coop's contract talks? There's not a whole lot going on there right now. A, we know the Cowboys tend to operate with the deadlines make deals mindset. So what I think and what that means is the Cowboys don't feel urgency. The front office doesn't have the same urgency that most front offices do because they're family. They're not they're not going to get fired all of a sudden the next year and they don't have to necessarily to be super super urgent. And I think for Cooper, he wants to see what Julio Jones gets. So I think that that one will get done just might be a little bit longer on that front. All right, more questions here coming in. Bobby, who would watch Tom and Mitch fight? I would. At least on replay, uh, I will fight dirty. Mitch is definitely stronger than me, but I, th I think I'm quicker, shiftier. Uh, I I'm gritty, uh, uh, coach's son type deal, that, that kind of thing there. All right, <laughs> afterlife. Y'all should be drinking Lone Star, but why is my question. Shiner, I know you guys are watching. Uh, hook us up here. Shiner's far better than Lone Star, so hook us up with that little, uh, little deal on the side, Shiner. All right, from Demo95, has there been any more news about Zeke's suspension? Not right now. I, I think at some point we'll, we'll get updates there. The NFL is investigating. But remember what we learned last time from the Zeke and really any NFL investigation. They take their good old sweet time. It is not going to be done overnight. They're going to drag it out probably, and they'll finally make a decision. So it is something to monitor. We'll, of course, update you guys anytime we get some news there. And we'll wait and see. For me, it's always at the back of my mind. It's a little bit of a concerning situation. All right, from longtime watcher Val Castillo, why does Mitch have so much blind faith in the Raiders' young guys but doesn't think our young guys will ever get better? Well, he's a Raiders fan. And I think the same is true for, for the Cowboys fans too. Like, you're going to believe in your own guys, right? All right, Chris Jensen, hashtag Cowboys, still a chance we get Eric Berry. <sighs> I'm saying there's a chance... But I'm also saying it like Jim Carrey said it, because I don't think the medical checked out for Eric Berry. And I think that's why he is still unsigned. I, I think at this point, don't get your hopes up, for Eric Berry. Now, maybe if there's an injury for the Cowboys, like, I don't know, Iloka or Heath get hurt or something unfortunate, maybe that changes. But I don't think the Cowboys have plans right now to sign Eric Berry. From David Blyde, 
Who gets into trouble between now and training camp? Last year's T will, he asks. Um, nobody, right? That's the goal. Like, I'm not going to pick a player and say he's going to get into trouble. I hope nobody gets into trouble. They're all on their bestest behavior, and they don't get into any issues at all. That's my goal, at least for the Cowboys, and I think that's all of our goals as well. All right, from Ronnie J., how you feeling about Dak going into the season? Can someone give me my Kool-Aid? Uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. I poured out the Kool-Aid, which, I mean, you know, for, for, at least for me, for the Cowboys. I have some belief in Dak Prescott and some opt optimism here for the Cowboys offense and Dak Prescott, but it's also June. So I feel confident and I feel optimistic, but I'm also cautious on that front because I don't want to just fully buy in and end up with a Dak-friendly offense situation where the offense was decidedly undak friendly All right, Buddy Johnson coming off our Raiders-Cowboys debate here. Dallas Cowboys are the world's team, and the Raiders can't make up their minds if they want to stay in California or Vegas. Ooh, shade at Oakland. All right, from Adam, who sent me his name pronunciation last night, and I don't remember what it is, and I'm sorry, Adam, so I'm going to go with Adam K, because I, I would have I gone with the one that I thought it was, and I know that's wrong. So what will make the offense more successful this year than last year? Big things for me, a lot of it falls on the shoulders of Kellen Moore. If he can call a better game, he does not have to be Sean McVay in year one. That's an unrealistic expectation. But if he can be a league average coordinator, oh, I think at that point, you're in a lot more success on the Cowboys offense. The red zone needs to be vastly more efficient. And the offense will be better with Travis Frederick being back and fully healthy. Pablo Torres, how many sacks do you think Lawrence would get? In my opinion, he'd get eight. i put it over under at ten and a half again. Now, of course, that assumes he plays week one, which I think he will play in week one. But he's not going to be able to be truly double team necessarily because there are other good players on the defensive line. So I think the over-under is at 10.5 for Tank, and I actually might lean more towards the over because he is one of the best edges in the NFL. I'm not even going to try that name because I'll botch it, but he's a Shiner Bach guy just like I am. Shiner Bach is the best beer out there. So Shiner, hook me up. I'm on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. From Golden Heart City 2, will the Cowboys beat upper-level teams this year in the regular season? They're going to have several chances. They play the Bears. They play the Rams. They, they play the Patriots as well. So they can do that. I think they'll beat at least one. I also don't know if they're going to go – they're not going to go 16-0. But if they can win 10 or 11, I'm going to be very happy with that. From Jazz on Jordan, do you think John Vay Johnson, everyone's favorite UDFA right now, can beat out Alan Hearns? I think he can, but it's not just Alan Hearns for Johnson. And if it comes down to those two, give me the cheaper guy. But it's not just Alan Hearns. It's Tavon Austin. It's Noah Brown. It's Cedric Wilson. It's somehow still Lance Lenore. It's Jalen Guyton. So Johnson can. Again, it's also minicamp and OTAs. Those are important, but nowhere near as actual training camp and actual preseason games. All right, from Chai Jackson, any news on Randy Gregory? Nothing right now on Gregory. Of course, we'll update for you guys here in, in whenever we get that news. I am, again, cautiously optimistic that we see Randy Gregory at some point during this NFL season. Of course, that assumes he takes care of himself off the field and puts himself in a good position to come back and be an impact player there for the Cowboys. From Fallen Text, says the Cowboys saw, your hashtag Cowboys saw a video on NFL Snapchat, mistake number one, don't trust Snapchat, use the chat sports app instead, of top 12 running backs for the upcoming season. They put Zeke at three. Who would they put in front of them? Saquon and, like, Kamara? Look, I think if you want to group them all together in tiers, that's fine. But, look, Zeke, I think, is the best back in the NFL. How can you not put the guy that led the NFL on rushing through the past three years and would have led it in the, in the second had he been, you know, active and not suspended at number one? That doesn't make any sense to me. All right, Anthony Meatball. Tony Pollard returning punts and kicks. He can. I don't know if the Cowboys are just going to hand him that job. I think they'll take some time on that. But in terms of, like, the prioritization for A, Tony Pollard, and for the offense and special teams in general, you want to install, get Pollard to speed in, on the ground game, and then give him some special teams ability. But he did it at Memphis, and he was really good there. So my hope is he does make that big impact for the Cowboys. From M. Hightower, are there any players in position to restructure their contract to create more cap room like players have done in the past? Great question. There are players that can do it. Zach Martin is one. Tyron Smith is another. And Travis Frederick is another as well. Those are the three big options there. 
But right now, I think for those players, the Cowboys are going to wait because there is uncertainty long term about the health of Tyron and, 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 and Frederick. And those contracts are actually fairly team friendly. The Cowboys do not need to do that right now. Now, down the road, they'll do it for Demarcus Lawrence and others. But for this season, I wouldn't anticipate any. Maybe Zach Martin, but it's still early enough that they probably don't need to. All right, from Jaquan Carter. Do you think Joe Jackson will beat Taco Charlton for a roster spot? That is a key battle to watch out for. I think there's Joe Jackson involved there, Kerry Hyder, Charlton, Dorrance Armstrong there as well. So there's a chance, but for now, I'll lean more with, towards Taco beating out Joe Jackson, at least for the time being. All right, next up here from Terminator Cop 1. He asks, what percentage do you have McGovern could beat out Sewell? There's certainly a chance that McGovern missed minicamp this week because he's banged up. I think that Connor Williams will still be the starter, but I'll put it at like 25-30. So certainly plausible. I wouldn't be overly surprised, but I still think Connor Williams is going to be your top guy there on that front in terms of the left guard. And then next year, that's a whole different discussion and story. All right, next up from Landlord, hashtag Cowboys, why can't we turn Noah Brown into a tight end? I, great question. I think in particular for the Cowboys, he offers value as a receiver. He's not like a typical tight end. I like him more as kind of that H-back wide receiver hybrid, the type of player that allows you to be an edge or a receiver and a tight end. But those are the latest Cowboys rumors here. News coming up. Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report. We have a new background for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments section. We're going to focus on the news today. There are quite a few notable things coming out of minicamp, which is about over now for the Dallas Cowboys. First up, some not great news. Noah Brown underwent a knee scope. That was during the final week of OTAs for the Cowboys. It is a minor procedure, so there's nothing to really panic about there. He should be back for training camp in that mid to latest July period. Of course, it is noteworthy for Brown because, A, he's battled several injuries throughout his NFL and Cowboys career. There's always something going on. I remember, he missed a good portion of the beginning of last season before coming back off of IR and playing at least a notable role, if not small role, for the Dallas Cowboys. But the problem right now for Brown is he's not guaranteed a roster spot. I think three guys in reality, as I've said many times before, have secured their spot. Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Randall Cobb. That leaves three-ish? Somewhere in that range, spots for some combination of Tavon Austin, Cedric Wilson, Noah Brown, Alan Hearns, and everyone's favorite undrafted free agent, John V. Johnson. So for Brown, the key thing for him, I think, is continuing to A, get back and be healthy, and also do many of the things he did last year and in his NFL career for the Cowboys. He's not a burner. He's not a dynamic wide receiver like Tavon Austin can be. But he does block very well, and he does a lot of the little things that really matter when you're hanging out in that 46 to 53 spot when you're filling out the back end of your roster. Now, Noah Brown is also battling with Alan Hearns for one of those roster spots, and we do have some good news on Alan Hearns. He is back and able to at least work a little bit here for the Cowboys, and he should be a full go during training camp for the Cowboys. That's a big deal. We all saw that gruesome, ugly ankle injury. And thankfully, Alan Hearns is working his way back from that. Right now, Hearns says he's at about 90%. And again, that is some fantastic news for Hearns and for the Cowboys. Now, Hearns is also aware of, of his contract's situation. The Cowboys can save about $5 million if they were to release him. And Hearns is fully aware, after catching just 20 passes last year and having his numbers, for the most part, on a downward plane since that really good breakout year for the Jags, which, frankly, unfortunately, looks more and more like an outlier the more that Hearns continues on his NFL career he is aware that he could be cut or asked to take a pay cut but step number one for the Cowboys and for Hearns is just getting back on the field and getting healthy and seeing if he can contribute as a backup wide receiver and maybe even on special teams as a gunner so let me ask you guys those are the two receivers or at least two of the receivers battling for a roster spot let's say you can only keep one let me know which one you're picking type H for Hearns and B for Noah Brown if everybody's healthy and you have Cooper and Gallup and and Cobb healthy and good to go, I actually might lean more towards Brown. If I need someone to actually start, I lean with Hearns. But with the way this Cowboys roster is constructed, Noah Brown is cheaper, and he does more of the things that you ask out of your typical number five or number six receiver than you would out of Alan Hearns. 
Let's stick with offense here. Dak looks better, and this is good news for the Cowboys. Now, the coaches and players and media, they're all heaping praise upon Dak Prescott. Now, of course, I mean, that's not a huge surprise given who Dak is in the contract coming up. And, of, I mean, what else are they going to say, right? Dak looks like trash? Of course they're not going to say that. But it is noteworthy for me and why I'm inclined to believe it a little bit more is even those who have criticized Dak in the past from a media perspective, have been pointing out, you know what, Dak? He looks good during practice and during minicamp and OTAs, and that's a big deal because Dak Prescott has not been a superstar practice player. He's like the exact opposite of Nathan Peterman. Nathan Peterman looks good in practice and falls apart during games in a laughable manner. Dak Prescott is iffy in practice and then plays pretty well during the games. But if Dak's practices have been better, isn't that an indication that Dak's actual on-field in-game reps are going to look better? Jason Witten says that Dak looks more accurate, has a better arm strength, and his anticipation, which I know many of you have been concerned about, also look better. John Kitten has heaped upon praise for Dak Prescott. So I'm not all aboard Dak having his best year ever quite yet. With that said, I am optimistic about Dak Prescott, as we'll discuss more here in a little bit, this entire offense. So will Dak Prescott have his best year ever, mainly from a statistical standpoint there? Obviously, best year can mean a lot of different things, as producer Brett is making faces at me behind the camera with right now. I don't mean wins and losses. I mean on the field, individual production. Type 1 for yes, type 0 for no. It is not set in stone because, again, folks, it is June. I'm not trying to overreact. But I do think that this offense is heading in the right direction. I think Prescott, as of right now, I lean more towards yes, he will. Speaking of the offense, how about Kellen Moore? And we've mentioned this one a little bit before, and it's only been reaffirmed throughout OTAs and through minicamp, that Kellen Moore is the Cowboys' offensive coordinator. This is not a drastic overhaul to this offense. This is not suddenly going to become a totally different new offense with all new formations, all new verbiage, all new everything. There will be still similar plays and a very common amount of those plays, but the presentation, and this I think is a good thing, is going to look different this year. Mario Cooper with a very similar to quote to ones we've seen from Dak Prescott. It's small variations, like for example, running the same plays, but then disguising them. Different formations, different shifts and motions. I'll take you back to when Kellen Moore first got hired. What I wanted to see from this Cowboys offense, number one was more pre-snap motion. I think I, I can declare that checked off. I think we're going to see a lot more pre-snap motion. I think we're going to see more play action. I still want all of the play action, of course. And then I want more crossing routes. And so far, the reports are more spreading out of the defense and more uses of Dax legs in the red zone. So I think from that perspective, we are very much heading in the correct direction for the Dallas Cowboys when it comes to what expecting from the offense. Now, here's the question. Are you drinking the Cowboys Kool-Aid? That's the key question. Now, again, it is June, and I will continue to make notes about how I don't believe in drinking Kool-Aid and getting overly excited by minicamp and by OTAs. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to drink the Kool-Aid quite yet, but I am going to pour it out. I'm going to pour it and let it sit for a little bit, and we'll see how it goes. Because I think this offense has the ability to take a big step forward. So I'm not going to drink the Kool-Aid quite yet. But I'll keep it here, I'll, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it cool, and we'll check back in during training camp. Because I will be honest, it is getting a little bit tough for me to not just want to guzzle this down. So let me know in the comment section if you're drinking Kool-Aid, yes or no. Let's move now to Zeke Elliott. This will kind of put a damper on everybody's expectations right now. The NFL did reach out to Vegas police about investigating, getting information about Zeke's non-arrest at that concert and that music festival in Las Vegas. Remember, Zeke, of course, was handcuffed after he, I'll say pushed. He did kind of push him a little bit, but come on, it really wasn't all that bad in the grand scheme of things. Despite that, I am not overreacting to the NFL going after information. And I think someone had tweeted at me the other day about how, well, if the NFL hasn't made a decision, that means there's nothing there yet. No, that the NFL got information, only confirms, which they've really already confirmed, that they are investigating Zeke for this. This does not mean that because they reached out for information and there's been no suspension yet, that there isn't going to, there isn't the potential of one. Now remember, some around the NFL think Goodell could try to teach Zeke a lesson again. And the one thing I think we've all learned now from the NFL punishment process, it is a complete and utter wild card. We don't know what it's going to do. 
Now, maybe there's nothing. I think that's the most likely outcome and the appropriate outcome here. I think the NFL has a lot more to worry about with Tyreek Hill right now than Zeke Elliott, especially in comparing the two things there. But for the Cowboys, with the way the roster's set up, probably want Zeke out there. Now, yes, Tony Pollard definitely has some impact ability. Ola Wally is a decent enough fullback, and we'll see who the third back is there. But as Stephen Jones has said, Zeke is this is this is the straw that stirs the offense as a drink. And I think that's important for the Cowboys. That is the quote. Don't give me that that look, Brett. It is the quote. Maybe I shuffled the, the, the order around, but it is the quote. But for, for for Zeke, the Cowboys need him out there. Now you can get by for a game or two, but if there's a significant suspension, with the way the roster's set up, better go sign JJ, let's put it that way. I'll ask us again. We haven't asked it in a while, but I think it's a good time to bring it back up. How worried are you about Zeke's last off-field incident? Let me know in the comment section. Grade on a scale of 1 to 10. As I expected, the last time we asked it, which was right after the report that the NFL would investigate it, the numbers went up across the board. I'm still at that 2, 3-ish range. I don't think there's anything to be freaking out about, but this should definitely be at the back of Cowboys fans' minds because... It's the NFL, it's Roger Goodell, it's Zeke Elliott. Didn't we learn our lesson last time, in theory? All right, folks, do you guys like the Cowboys report? Well, make sure you're subscribed. The link right there is below. We already passed the 25K mark, then we got 30K we're, if, because we're big ballers here and we expect to win 50k for the Cowboys so make sure you're subscribed youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report hit that big button if you're watching right now on YouTube we know a lot of you watch the show and actually aren't subscribed so I'm not quite sure what you're doing there so let's change that right now and subscribe to the Cowboys Report all right more notes here uh, these are some injury updates I think this might be a people freak out about but let's not freak out about this at all again it is June so Tank and Byron Jones are expected to begin the year on the PUP list, at least in terms of training camp. And that really shouldn't be a huge surprise. Remember, both Lawrence and Jones originally had had their return windows pegged in time for a week one at minimum, maybe in the preseason. Now, Jones did say he wanted to be back for training camp. I think the Cowboys are going to pump the brakes on Byron and not allow him to rush himself back or go at a, at a too early pace there. Again, Jones coming back from that hip surgery. And it does make sense to start these players on the PUP list. That's the physically unable to perform list because you put them on there at that moment, it gives you flexibility just in case there's a sudden you know, relapse and they end up taking a month to recover. It doesn't automatically force you to put them on IR because if you don't put someone on the PUP list at camp, they have to go right to IR. There is no other available option. Now for the Cowboys, they are banged up right now at cornerback overall. Byron, of course, is out. Cheeto missed minicamp. That, that has left a lot of reps for players like Anthony Brown, Donovan Alumba, Jordan Lewis, and Michael Jackson, which, frankly, that's probably not the worst thing in the world. I mean, don't you want to get Jackson and Alumba reps and, and get Lewis more reps as well? Byron and Cheeto, frankly, don't need a ton at this point in the season. The same is true at defensive end here, where Demarcus Lawrence, of course, had his offseason shoulder surgery, got that fixed. He's all fine now. And again, this is not a huge deal for either player. And for the Cowboys, you just made Demarcus Lawrence, rightfully so, a $100 million man. Why do you want to rush him back? Now with Tank out, you give more reps to Quinn to get him back into the new defensive scheme. More reps for Dorrance Armstrong. More reps for Joe Jackson. And Dorrance Armstrong, by the way, has taken advantage so far in minicamp. So I, this is obviously not necessarily ideal for the Cowboys if those guys start the P, uh, camp on the PUP list. But there certainly are a lot worse outcomes for the Cowboys than having them miss a couple of early weeks in camp and in the offseason. All right, folks, make sure you follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny and send me any Cowboys questions you have as well. And, of course, make sure you're, you're subscribed, and that link is coming up in just a second.